baby and welcome back everybody welcome back here to regrowth where we are going to regrow the world possibly i don't know anyway guys we probably need to talk about a few things regarding regrowth me and you me and you the viewer now honestly um you may have noticed in my channel i haven't been posting a lot of regrowth videos there is a reason for that and honestly it comes down to grindiness. Um, I like this mod pack. I like the idea of this mod pack. But um, here in the, the level of the pack that I'm in right now is extremely grindy. Making all of these crazy seeds over here is extremely grindy. Each one is a complicated thing, a doodads. And I think even the level after that is going to get more complicated. Hold on. I've got a fan over here. No autographs! Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's just kind of gotten really grindy and I find myself instead wanting to play Resident Rise or even bad games like Insanes. So it doesn't mean we're going to not play this, but I think what we're going to do is maybe reevaluate how I want to play it. Um, right now, with this Hardcore Quest Mode map, the, the, the name of the game is completing all of these quests. Now, completing all of these quests is, unfortunately, it's the problem. So, um, for example, let's go to Life of the World. We'll open that up. Now, one of, a, a series of these quests is creating eggs for mobs that you will never use. Like, why would I want a slime? Why would I want a sheep? Why, I don't know. Anyway, some of these, especially some of these in the outer region, which I know are monsters, like why would I want to spawn a creeper? I don't know, but I don't want to do it. And it just seems really dull and I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it. It sounds boring and I don't want to be a completionist. Uh, you know, some of these guys that have to play 100% of Final Fantasy which is ridiculous. You take like 50 hours out of your time. I got, I, I got a limited amount of time. I got a wife. I got responsibilities. I got a job. So I can't be screwing around play, playing silly silliness like this, like making a freaking ghast egg that I would never use. But anyway, all right, let me stop complaining about Hardcore Quest Mode. Hardcore Quest Mode is just a suggestion, guys. It always has been. It, you're not going to die if you don't do all of these little quests. So what I'm thinking is we're going to stick with the theme of the map, which is regrowing the world. So what I'm going to do is we need to get ourselves to a tipping point in the world. We've, we've talked about this before. We're going to get ourselves, what kind of tree is this? This is a Sakura, but that's Sakura. Sakura? Sakura. Okay, I'm getting distracted. We need to get the ecosystem in this world to a point, a tipping point that it'll take over. Do you guys see that wolf right there? Do you think we could take them? I think you do. Oh, oh God. Ah! Stop it. <laughs> anyway, we need to get the ecosystem to a tipping point. And my idea, and I actually got it, the idea that I had and I was thinking about. And then a couple of people in the comments, actually one dude in particular, I, f I forget your name, man. But the idea was we get to the point in witchery where we can change biomes. We get to the point in witchery where we can spread forests. And then that would be it. That would be our goal in this game. Now, honestly, to change biomes, I think takes a coven of six witches or five witches or even four witches. Who the heck knows? But a lot of damn witches. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to that point. Um, it may take us a little bit. And honestly, that's good because we want to round out this series. So, yeah, that's the idea. We are going to get to the point where we can basically manipulate the biomes of the world and then that will cause the world to regrow with our magics and whatnot. So anyway, let me stop babbling about this and show you some of the stuff. It is raining and I do not like that. Um, it apparently is daytime, so we're not going to be able to stop the rain. Hey, it's raining. Oh, it's only raining right here. Look at this. It doesn't rain in the wasteland. But it does rain here in, what is this? This is like an eerie biome. Yeah, this is an eerie biome. Eerie biomes are created by these uh, Thomcraft nodes that are sinister. So it does rain here. I wonder if I move those water barrels over into this biome, if they would fill up faster. Anyway, just a thought. 
But anyway, I need to show you a lot of stuff I've gotten done in between episodes because we are getting started on witchery. Um, and I think the witchery one is way down in the bottom. I think it's how the world changes. You open it up and it starts opening up all these crazy witchery quests. And witchery is a great mod. It's one of the best ones out there. Um, and with it, it, it's kind of hard. I will give it that. It's not an easy man's mod. It's not like, you know, it's not like an easy mod to get through. So th it, there's a bit of a challenge to it. And by golly, I got to tell you some of the challenges I had with this stuff right here. So I did this quest right here, which was called Wicked Shrubbery. Uh, first thing you got to do is get a shear. Got it. The next thing you have to do is find a glintweed, an ember moss, and a Spanish moss. Now, I heard a kitty cat. Hello, kitty cat. Kitty cat? No kitty cat. Okay. So, I got to tell you, part of the grindy part of this mob, or mod pack, is this quest right here. Mutandus took for... It took me like five stacks of Mutandus to finally get the last thing I was missing, which is the Spanish moss. And now I got Spanish moss, which is good. I need it for various quests, so we're going to go ahead and harvest some of this. I have it growing on a couple of trees out here, and honestly, I would like to spread it even more. But this is fine. What do I got? Like, four pieces of it? That's good. And I got the glintweed, like, right away. And I got the ember moss, like, right away. So I have these planted around here so they can grow and be beautiful and beautiful up the landscape. I love the glintweed as a lighting substitute for torches. So that is a cool thing, and we're going to get a lot of those grown. Um, but yeah, it took forever to get this freaking Spanish moss. Good golly. Like, I was just making and making and making mutandus and it was just taking forever and that's what i'm talking about the grindiness of this pack that is only one example of it but we'll we'll find more later um another quest i did is i went ahead and i made these uh what do you call these enhanced inventories i'm not sure how i feel about them only because you can't see what's all in your chest at once but they do have a bigger inventory so i went ahead and i souped up some of these improved chests up to the diamond level and they seem pretty cool. One problem with them, and I don't like this at all, is you can't move them with the dolly. The dolly will not move them, so you gotta make sure you put these chests in a place that's cool. Or otherwise you're gonna get screwed. So, yeah. Another thing I did was I made myself a bunch of Man of Steel armor. I made myself some Man of Steel boots and legs and all that. I made myself a bunch of Man of Steel things. I also made this guy, which is an Alumite Scythe. You guys can look that up in Tinker's Construct. And this thing is great for harvesting crops. Oh my goodness, look at this. Like nine at once. That is amazing. That is a time saver and a half. I've been punching all these crops this whole time and I could have just been doing that. So what I've been doing is I've been keeping my experience here in this chest and I've got a little bit of an enchanting table up here. Now that I have diamonds, I can make things that have diamonds in them. It's a, oh my goodness. <laughs> so I made myself two mana pylons, which will get you up to 30 levels of enchantment. And yeah, basically what you can do with these essence of experience is make experience drops. And each experience drops gives you so much experience. So as you see, two of them gave me five levels of experience. Kind of cool. And yeah, so we got our crops growing here. And at the moment, it looks like these are done. Let's see, these are 7, 10. These hopefully have reached 10, 10, 10. I'm going to take that many, and we're going to run over to our crop analyzer, which honestly, we should totally we should totally move this closer. This just seems like a waste. Yeah, these are definitely at 10, 10, 10, only because they stacked that close. Yeah, there we go. 10, 10, 10. Very cool. So what we will do off screen is plant these in a large variety. And these are the infusion shard seeds. And I haven't used these yet, but we may as well go look at them. If we grab a couple of the essence here, um, let's look up shards. And well, that's that. Let's see what we can make with these guys. So if you put it this way, you can make a yellow one. Yeah, so basically it's is it's cool thing. Basically, you can make these Thomcraft shards with it. I honestly am not sure how far we're going to get into Thomcraft. I love Thomcraft, but it is totally a time sink. And I want to, I basically kind of want to focus on witchery in order to get to our end game stuff. And so we can, can kind of get it, kind of get it done. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to plant these old boys right here. And boop, 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 boop. Anyway, I don't know why I'm doing this on camera. I should totally do this off camera. 
So I got seven 10, 10, 10s. I've probably got a lot more than 10 that, but we're just gonna do this now. So there we go, seven 10, 10, 10, 10s, and you go there. Sure, why not? And for now, we'll just take the rest of this and we'll throw it in our little white bag of holding. And I hate how you can't shift click into these bags. It's kind of not cool, man, not cool at all. We could put our pants in there and our iron thing. Very good, okay. So let's get to it, guys. Let's get to some quests here. We've got a lot to do. We got to get through witchery, which is uh, kind of a feat in itself. So in order to get some of these quests done, I say we go ahead and do this one. With this guy, we're going to make a Polynesia charm. And with this thingy, we can talk to animals. And what it will do is it will net us a fume filter, which will help with us making fumes. Very cool. So, we gotta make this thing, um, so let's look up the recipe, we are run over to our crafting table here, let's type in poly, and we'll click this guy, basically for nether wart, we need a raw cod, we need two odors of purity, an iron, and a whiff of magic, so let's go ahead and grab at least the whiffs out of here, let's see here, here's two odors of purity, here is a whiff of magic, and you get these from smelting down different witchery trees. You'll have to look it up in any eye, which one does which. I think this Whiff of Magic is from Rowan saplings, and I think this Reek of Misfortune is from, like, Hawthorne saplings. Anyway, you just look it up in any eye. You'll find it. Okay, so we got that. We need four pieces of nether wart, and that means I think I need to go way back here to my, my secondary base. I don't know if you guys think I'm running any faster. I got haste three on my boots, plus the Sojourner's Sash, and I'm not sure if that makes you faster or not, but it would be really cool if it did. Okay, so we got that. What else did this thing take before I run too far away from this area? I need a raw cod and a piece of iron. Now, through some of the Mariculture quests, I did actually catch myself a cod, and look at this. I think this is a male cod. It has a little male symbol right next to its name. So there's our cod. And what I think I could do with these raw salmon, if I need any sort of fish, I could run up to my alchemy catalyst here, throw it in, and I can get a different kind of fish. And I can keep throwing those fish back in to cycle through all of the vanilla fish. So if you ever need fish of varying types, just do that, but you do have to catch one of the basic fishes, and they look a little different when Mariculture is installed. So yeah, here's a raw salmon, here's a raw puffer fish. The rest of these fish will not work because they are stinky old Mariculture fish. So anyway, we got our cod. Um, we got that. We need one piece of iron. Boop. And you know, I have, I have played witchery quite a bit, and I have never made one of these Polynesia charms. So this will be interesting, and I definitely want to play with it. So, boop. Actually, let's see if we can shift click this in. Can we shift clicky? Of course not. I don't know why I wouldn't be able to, but let's give this a try. Da, 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 da. And that there. Now, what could I have possibly have done wrong? Now, this is a regular raw cod. So, I wonder if it can't be... It, it can't be this stupid cod right here. So, let's take this cod... <laughs> over to the stupid alchemy catalyst and turn it into the appropriate cod. Man, this game is a stickler sometimes. That is for sure. This is another example. Oh, this wouldn't even work. This is not the right cod. So I think what we need to do is we need to take those raw salmon and use those. If that isn't confusing, I don't know what is. All right, here we go. So let's take this salmon and we're gonna throw it in the alchemy catalyst like that. We get a clownfish, we turn the clownfish into a pufferfish, and then we turn the pufferfish into a raw cod. Now, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost 100% sure that is the correct cod. I do believe we finally got the correct cod. All right, so, boom, put that in the middle, and one Polynesia charm. So let's go ahead and cash that in. And we should get a fume filter, which I think we can just liberally apply to the outside of a fume filter. Can I just do that? No, I'd no work. Do I have to... Let's pick it up. Let's try crafting it onto it. Maybe that's the case. No? No? There we go. Filtered fume funnel. Man, who would have ever guessed that would be the recipe? It has to go under it. There we go. So that will definitely help in getting our fumes. 
very cool and now we have a Polynesia charm and what you can do with these is you can converse with the animals of the world um, I'm gonna show you this guy here in a second we're gonna just ignore that we're gonna actually make one of those here in a little bit and I'm gonna talk to this cow all right if I click on the cow oh look at this I can trade him wheat for a tree fed seed that's actually a really good trade. Hold on, let's go grab some damn wheat because I don't want to make tree fed seeds if I could just trade for them. That's actually damn cool. All right, do I actually have any wheat? That would also be really cool. I'm gonna actually grab this and this as well. We're gonna, we're gonna make something with this here in a second. Now, let's go over to our crops. I think that's where I keep my wheat. Wheat, there we go. We are going to max him out of those tree fed seeds. That is for Ding Dong, sure. All right, buddy, what you got for me? Oh, give me that. How many did I get? Oh, he only gave me one. Oh, what a cheapskate. All right, can I trade you something else? I could trade more wheat for a bone, and then that's it. Let's try the other cow. Hey, you, bossy. Um, wheat for a belladonna flower, that is gross. Okay, let's go back to him. <coughs> Excuse me, I should have coughed away from the thing. Okay, we got it. All right. And I think that's it. Oh, that kind of stinks. But I did get one tree fed seed out of it, which I kind of want to hold on to. Because let's look up tree fed seed. Tree f it's about tree fitty. Maybe it's like try. Let's look up. Oh, crap. How do you spell this thing? Tree fied. It's a tree fied. Okay. Tree fied. There it is. All right, we want to find out what we can do with this. With this guy, we can take five strong essence, thing of this, and we can make ourselves a great wood sapling. We can also plant this into the ground and make a tree fed, which we're not going to do, I don't think. Let's actually see. This actually doesn't look too hard to make, but these are not easy to come by, actually, because it requires Mutandus Extremis, Rika Misfortune, Tear the Goddess. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to this so that I can make myself a great wood sapling out of it instead. So we're gonna, we're gonna tuck this away so I don't accidentally plant it. There we go. We can also try and talk to this chicken over here. Hello, Mr. Chicken or Mrs. Chicken. Um, let's see, maybe, maybe we could jump up on this chest. All right, so if we do that and click on you with the Polynesia charm. Oh my God, you ran away, you turd. I can actually trade him for eggs. Okay, he got away. That chicken totally escaped. Chicken! I have no way of picking you up. You are a jerk. All right. I guess I actually have to use some of these eggs now to replace him. Okay, stick it, chicken. One, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, seven, eight, nine. Goodness gracious! Okay, thank you for finally for finally putting a chicken into the world. Boom. No! No, don't get out! I'm killing you! I'm killing you, you little punk! You are gonna die! Alright, back to it. Holy crap, man! What is wrong with this game? Why is everything so difficult in regrowth? Get in your pen! Stay in there! Oh. I guess I can't blame a chicken for wanting to escape, but come on, man. Seriously. You, you're gonna die too, jerk. Anyway, we got our Polynesia charm. We got a nice cooked chicken out of the deal. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> now let's see what else we can do. Um, let's open up the book. Actually, let's go ahead and make this thing. This thing is pretty funny. Um, so I was digging around in any eye and I came across a little bit of a funny recipe that I wanted to show you guys. And here it is. You take a pumpkin, you take a melon, and then you take three seed, three sticks like that, and you get yourself a scarecrow from Extra Biomes. Now, I don't know what the heck these things do other than look really weird, but here you go. It's actually a person. It's actually like an entity. And it, it kind of ignores you. It turns your back on you. And it's got a little face. It's got a little face. And you can push it around and stuff too. We could put it right here in the middle. And I don't know if he actually guards your crops, but um, he's definitely a weird looking dude. But that's kind of cool. We should name this guy or something, but I don't have any name tags. 
How you doing, buddy? Your name's Scarecrow. I actually have one way over there. We ran by them a few times, but I couldn't resist making one of these because they're so funny. So anyway, now that that's done, I wish there was a achievement for that because that is the coolest thing I've made in this game so far. All right, next one is going to be this double, double toil and trouble. Um, basically, what do we get? We need to make anointing paste, and with an anointing paste, you can take a cauldron and turn it into... Is it a cauldron? Let's see, what is this called? This is a cauldron, and we're going to turn it into something else. We're going to turn it probably into another cauldron. Anyway, let's look up what anointing paste is. Anointing. This is new witchery stuff, and I'm not very familiar with it. Let's just look up paste. I apparently don't know how to spell to save my life. All right, anointing paste takes one mandrake, one that, one that, and one that. So basically, like, all the witchery seeds. We're going to stick this uh, Polynesia charm up here, and we're going to grab this, 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 and this. And we're going to make ourselves some anointment paste. And then we're going to get to anointing. Believe it or not, something will be anointed. There we go. And I think what I could do is I can put this down. Let's say we'll put it down there, and I can anoint it. And look at that, it makes a witch's cauldron. It turns a regular cauldron into a witch's cauldron. And that is a great little model, I tell you what. Look, it's got little feet. It's very cute. And what we want to do with that is we'll pick it up. And I guess we need to put it somewhere. And I do like the idea of keeping it somewhere around here. What we're going to do is we're going to expand this, um, this grass outward. And we'll create a nice little um, kind of foresty witchery area here. So what we can do is we're gonna stick that there. Actually, let's dig this up and let's go grab ourselves some nether rack. And we'll make ourselves a proper little thingy over here where we can keep our cauldron and keep it bubbling. So is there just regular nether rack? There is. And we'll go back out. Do I have a flint and tinder on me? I do. Wonderful. Good news, everybody. So let's get this going. Well, we're just going to set it up maybe actually even a little bit more out this way because I think I'm going to have to draw some witches circles around it in order to get the most out of it. So we're just going to stick it here from now. And with this thingy, we can make various recipes. I think we can make all kinds of junk. I just don't know what yet. We're going to get to it. This is a new area of witchery for me. And actually, let's do that and that and there we go it's all suited up i don't know how it's floating above the flame like it is but this is minecraft don't don't think about it too much you'll hurt your pretty little head all right and then we could put some water in there actually i think it takes multiple buckets of water to do this which is kind of a pain but whatever 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 there we go so it's all bubbling now we could possibly make something with this what i don't know so let's actually look up Mutandus Extremis. And I think we're gonna have to use the cauldron to make it. It takes a nether wart and a mutandus. Okay, so I'm actually gonna have to make some mutandus because I used it all up trying to get this crap. So let me get that stuff and we'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm, I'm back and I just remembered that the cauldron actually takes altar power. I literally ran this way two steps and I was like, wait a minute, I can't do it yet. So I need an altar. Um, I don't even know if we can make an altar yet. There definitely hasn't been a quest for it, but I say screw the quest, quest book. We need an altar. All right, let's claim our reward. Oh, wait, detection task, claim reward. Is my inventory full? I think my inventory is full of garbage. So let's maybe clean that out first. Doot, doot. Oh, that's right, you can't shift click. Sweet baby Jesus. And we'll stick that in there too. All right, can I do now? There we go. We got ourselves some more of these little saplings, which isn't a great reward, but we did get some clay jars. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's go back and see if that opens up anything. It actually does. We now have the quest to make an altar. We need to make two altar thingies and we'll get some pumpkins and melons and Spanish moss. Oh man. I could have gotten it that way. Anyway, let's make an altar, and then maybe we'll round out this episode with said altar. All right, altar. Actually, I think it's with an A, right? There we go, altar. And it takes two rowan wood. It takes stone, 
uh, Exile of the Horned One and Breath of the Goddess, which is Birch. Holy crap, guys. Let's run around and get this stuff. This is going to take a oak sapling and a birch sapling. And I don't know if I have that stuff. I got some oaks over here. Let's just grab this one up real quick. Now, if I was smart... Actually, let's grab another oak sapling. We're going to use our handy dandy alchemy catalyst to turn this oak sapling into a birch sapling. Actually, I think I need a couple of them. Oh, that's right. Ooh, let's hope... Let's hope we get lucky out of this. Um, Q. Now, I want to save this one. Alright, so let's put this one down here. Let's hope we get lucky, guys. There we go. We got our birch sapling. And maybe, if we're super lucky, super lucky fantastic 5,000, we will get a fume on every one of these. If not, we, we might have to save this for another episode because it's got a pain in the butt. Let's grab some old flasks. Throw those in there. All right. Cross your fingers, guys. Cross your butts. Hope to die. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, baby, we got it. All right. We're feeling lucky. Let's do this one now. Come on, sugar baby. Come on, honky. Give it to me. Ah, oh, man. Our luck is good today, baby. All right. So let's do this. Hopefully, this will be enough. If not, we will definitely have to do this in another episode. I think it might, we might need two of them. I think I've gotten over exuberant for nothing. All right, let's grab ourselves some stone bricks. Um, do I have any Rowan wood in here? That's alder. Here's Rowan, very good. And what else did this require? That makes three and I'm gonna need six. Son of a gun. All right guys, I'm gonna go get myself some more oak saplings and birch saplings and we'll be right back. Okie dokie guys, we are back. We collected all the rest of the garbage we needed to make these altars and there's three of them and if we add one more water bottle, there's three more. So this is kind of your power source in Witchery. Um, I, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with this, but I will not leave out details. This is your power source in Witchery and the more nature -y stuff that you have around your altar, the higher the power is and the more stuff you can do with it. So we're going to set it up here for now. We'll probably move it up and it is a two by three structure you'll know when it's made when the little red carpet comes out and basically this is where you kind of do your evil worshiping or maybe your good worshiping it depends on what kind of witch you are um some people think witch is more of a worshiping of nature some people think witches are bad things who knows i don't know i've never met one couldn't tell you so anyway um now that we have this it has a very low power but we can add things like trees and plants and other thingamaboppers around it. We can also add things like multipliers. All right, let's look at it now. It says 2015 or 1215 1, and we put this guy, we put a few of these guys around it. It goes up a little bit. So if we put more saplings around, saplings are huge, flowers are huge, grass is huge. And yeah, we can definitely get this stuff. So let's open this up. We're going to claim our reward. And these pumpkins and stuff help too. So it's not a bad idea to throw a few of these around. Even though it's kind of a mess. But, doot, doot. We could actually, if we, I kind of like spreading them out because I like the look of nature stuff. Um, I think it looks really cool. We're going to put that there. <laughs> And that there, we might eventually move all of this, so this could be for not, but I just want to show you how much it powers up the thing. So yeah, we're now up to 1,289, and if we wanted to make Mutandus Extremis, like we were talking about before, we would need to grab ourselves a couple of things. Actually, we're going to save that for another episode. Um, I think I'm running just a t tad bit long, and plus I want to save up some more cool witchery stuff so we can do it all at once. And I definitely want to power up this altar and build out the land around it. And honestly, I don't think this altar is more is powerful enough to even run this witch's cauldron at the moment. So yeah, apparently you could stand on top of a witch's cauldron and not get burned. So yeah, guys, um, as always, I want to thank each and every one of you handsome and gorgeous people for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments or, you know, just disagreements or grievances, let me know in the comments. I will ban you immediately. And until next time, guys, we'll see you all real soon.